Well, hey guys, have you ever developed a rash or a skin problem and thought to yourself, could this be a food allergy? If so, you're going to want to keep watching today's video because I'm going to be sharing with you the skin signs of food allergies. Food allergies happen when your immune system mistakenly thinks that a given protein in a food is somehow a threat and it reacts to it anytime you eat that food. Almost any food can cause an allergic reaction, but some foods are responsible for most food allergies. In young children, the most common food allergies are gonna be milk, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, fish, and shellfish. Whereas for adults, food allergies most commonly are to peanuts, tree nuts, certain fruits like apples and peaches, fish and shellfish. Now, of course, anyone can develop a food allergy, but food allergies are a lot more common in people who have atopic dermatitis, which commonly goes by the name eczema, um, people who have hay fever and or asthma. There are three main types of food allergies. Number one, IgE mediated food allergies. IgE stands for immunoglobulin E. It's something that your immune system makes in response to an allergen in a given food that you are allergic to. These types of food allergies are the most common and importantly, the symptoms present within seconds to minutes of you ingesting the food. Of all the three types of food allergies, this type is the one that um, can be associated with life-threatening allergic reactions, otherwise known as anaphylaxis. The other type of food allergy is non-IgE mediated. Now, as the name implies, it does not involve IgE. Instead, it involves other cells in your immune system. And in contrast to IgE mediated food allergies, this one can take a little bit longer for the symptoms to arise after you have eaten something. Even more confusing is the third type of food allergy, mixed IgE and non-IgE. You can basically have overlap between the two. For IgE mediated food allergies, within seconds to minutes of eating the food that you are allergic to, you'll start feeling itchy. Maybe you'll have a little bit of tingling in your mouth, your tongue, and you might develop urticaria. That's the medical term for hives. Now I have videos all about hives. Hives, there are a lot of different causes for hives. Not every hive is due to a food allergy, but in some cases, food allergies can trigger hives. Hives present as these red swellings. They're very, very itchy. Importantly though, with hives, you'll develop multiple hives and each hive only lasts a few seconds to minutes, no more than a few hours. You can go on to develop more hives elsewhere on the body and you'll notice that you become very itchy as you start scratching. This can elicit the appearance of more hives. The cells of the immune system are all revved up. They're releasing all of these inflammatory mediators that lead to vasodilation of the blood vessels, and bring in a lot of fluid, and you get these localized swellings known as hives. Some cases you can develop swelling of the lips, the tongue, the throat. You can develop something known as angioedema, profound swelling of the lips, the tongue, and the face. Angioedema is profound swelling of the face, the lips, the tongue, the back of the throat, can be associated with shortness of breath, wheezing, IgE-mediated food allergies, they can cause a lot of abdominal pain, stomach pain, and diarrhea. You might also have sneezing, itchy, watery eyes. But as I mentioned, IgE-mediated food allergies can lead to the life-threatening allergic reaction known as anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis will start out with many of the symptoms I just outlined, but very, very quickly, things take a sharp turn for the worse. Difficulty breathing, the heart rate goes up, you have a sensation of impending doom, your blood pressure drops, you can lose consciousness, it is life-threatening. Another constellation of symptoms that is sort of a variant of IgE-mediated food allergy is something known as the oral allergy syndrome. Basically, the person is uh, allergic to pollens, but the immune system gets a little confused. There's some different proteins in certain foods that look like the pollen allergens. And so when you ingest these foods, you get tingling, itching in the mouth, the tongue. The oral allergy symptoms do not uh, end up leading to anaphylaxis. Oral allergy syndrome though is interesting because it's most often to uh, certain fruits and nuts, but when you cook the fruits or nuts, it denatures the pollen-like allergen that your immune system is confused by and you have no problem with it. Yeah, let me know in the comments if you ever get like an itchy mouth eating raw nuts, but if you eat those nuts baked in something, you have no problem. No skin rashes with that one, but you can have some swelling of your lips. I wanna tell you a story of a really interesting subtype of IgE food allergy. It's called alpha-gal syndrome. Alpha-gal, sounds like, like a boss babe, alpha-gal, is a sugar found on the cells 
of many mammals. So this allergen is found in pork, beef, venison, rabbits. Um, it's also found in gelatin because that comes from uh, pork or beef. And it's found in milk and milk products. So people who have alpha-gal syndrome, they have to avoid, avoid any foods with mammalian derivatives. Likewise, you, you know, have to be very careful of sauces that are cooked in animal fat. It's interesting, in contrast to classical IgE-mediated food allergies, these folks don't develop symptoms of hives, itching, watery eyes, uh, within seconds to minutes of eating meat, it actually takes several hours, but it is an IgE-mediated food allergy. Here's where it gets even weirder. This food allergy is actually not triggered initially by eating meat. It's rather triggered by a tick bite. A tick bite sensitizes you to this alpha-gal Alpha gal, I laugh whenever I say that. Alpha gal sugar that is present in many mammals. Um, and thereafter, you are, you know, pretty significantly allergic. The offending tick is most often the lone star tick, although other ticks possibly can trigger this. So, f people who have this, they're fine to eat birds like chicken, they're fine to eat fish. Uh, non-mammals, they can eat reptiles, they just can't eat mammalian stuff. All right, but yeah, many of the same symptoms, shortness of breath, wheezing, hives, itchy, watery eyes, potential to go on to anaphylaxis. Moving on to the signs of non-IgE mediated food allergies, these are a little different. And again, they take several hours to develop, sometimes even days after eating the food that you're allergic to. And the rashes are more nonspecific. They tend to be red, itchy, they can look like eczema, they tend to get dry, thickened, and cracked. You can have symptoms of heartburn, indigestion, but in contrast to IgE-mediated food allergies, there's typically no diarrhea. With this type of food allergy, you actually can develop um, bright redness around the anus and in the genital area. In some cases, you can develop even blood in your stools. Now with the mixed IgE and non-IgE mediated food allergy, you can have some overlap in the different symptoms that we've just outlined. What foods are the culprits? Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, when it comes to the IgE mediated food allergies, the most common in children at least are going to be peanuts, milk, eggs, tree nuts, fish, and shellfish. Whereas for adults, the most common IgE-mediated food allergies are peanuts, tree nuts, fruits, shellfish, and fish. There are a lot of different other things out there that can cause the non-IgE-mediated food allergy symptoms. Herbs and spices, turmeric, and the curcumin compound in turmeric specifically, you can develop an allergy to that, and you can end up with itchy rashes around the mouth. A culprit for non-IgE-mediated food allergies is gonna be food additives and food dyes. Carmine, which is added to meat to prevent it from oxidizing, to keep it that bright red color, some people are allergic to that. Annatto, which is something that is added to butter and cheese to give it that bright yellow look. Annatto is also added to lipsticks, so some people may have allergic reactions to their lipsticks. Tartrazine, another food ad additive, and cochineal red, which is a dye. Then of course you have preservatives in food. Some people have non-IgE mediated allergies too, like butylated hydroxy anisole. Of course a lot of people have allergic reactions to sulfites. Sulfites are added to prevent browning. They're found in dried fruits, wine, molasses, pickled foods, vinegars. A while back, I did a video on foods causing facial redness. And you'll recall from that video that a compound in several types of foods and spices is called cinnamaldehyde. Cinnamaldehyde can bring about uh, vasodilation and potentially can trigger hives for some people or if anything, flushing and facial redness. Some foods have a high cinnamaldehyde content, including well, cinnamon, certain spices like cloves, tomatoes, and chocolate, unfortunately. Yeah, the cinnamaldehyde activates something called TRPV channels, and that's what leads to the blood vessel dilation and redness. We can't talk about skin findings of food allergies without a talk on histamine-containing foods. I get a lot of questions about this, actually. Now, this isn't a true allergic reaction, per se, uh, but rather a pseudoallergen, and the most classic example of this is actually quote-unquote histamine poisoning. 
Um, and this happens because some fish, especially tuna, mackerel, they have something called histidine. And if those fish spoil, bacteria break down the histidine into histamine. And you can get, uh, when, if you eat spoiled fish, basically you can get something called scromboid poisoning, basically from that megadose of histamine. You, do, you get a bright red rash on your face, your chest, your upper back, burning mouth, pounding headache, your heart rate goes up, your blood pressure can go down, you feel like misery. Um, this doesn't go on to anaphylaxis, but the treatment for this is antihistamines and it tends to resolve within you know a couple of hours fortunately but it's it's pretty miserable for people it's it's scromboid poisoning so that's like the most extreme case of taking of ingesting a lot of histamine histamine is not an allergen but it's just gonna like rev up a lot of the symptoms of, of, of itching and, and hives some people are just very sensitive to histamine in foods as well so other foods that are potentially high in histamine mean are fermented foods because the bacteria break down histidine. These include aged cheeses, dry sausages, and like fermented soybean, nutto. Some plant foods have a high histamine content, eggplant, tomato, avocado, and spinach. The amount of histamine is going to be very variable, uh, you know, depending on the season and you know, where it was cultivated and all of those kinds of things. But all that to say, some people are really sensitive to histamine in foods, and it can lead to skin rashes, itching, and symptoms of, you know, an allergic reaction. Let me know in the comments if you are sensitive to histamine. So how do you go about figuring out if you have a food allergy? These are the symptoms that we covered in today's video, but how is it actually diagnosed? You need to see your healthcare provider. This is not something that you can diagnose yourself. When you see your doctor, they're going to want to know how long after eating the sus suspected food was it that you developed the symptoms? How severe were the symptoms? Have you ever had these symptoms in the past or is this the first time that this has ever happened? How much food did you actually eat when these sim symptoms came about? Is there a family history of food allergies? Do you have eczema? Do you have asthma? Do you have seasonal allergies? These are some of the questions that you're going to want to be prepared to answer if you suspect that you have an allergy to a food. Then there are some different types of tests that can be done to determine if you are allergic to a food, namely skin prick testing, which is going to test for those IgE antibodies, or they may order a blood test to look for those. Now, those tests, they're not 100% perfect. They have their flaws, and sometimes they identify a lot of stuff that you're not even allergic to. So it's important that those be done by you know a, a, an allergist who knows how to interpret them and taking into account your history and you know really understanding if it's actually a relevant allergen to you. Just because you react to something on an allergy test it doesn't mean it's actually relevant. Once the allergy is identified, well then you know the treatment is avoidance. In the throes of of, of hives, check out my video on tips for hives. I go over some things to keep in mind to keep the hives from getting worse. Things like cool compresses, putting your clothing on gently, um, cool moisturizers. I give a lot of tips in that video. Um, the treatment for, for flares of hives and these allergic symptoms by and large is gonna be antihistamines. For serious allergic reactions like worsening shortness of breath, increased heart rate, dropping your blood pressure, concerning for anaphylaxis, that's gonna be an emergency. Um, they're gonna need to, to treat you with medications to control your blood pressure and get all of that under control. And if you have a history of those more serious allergic reactions, you're going to be prescribed uh, like an EpiPen, an epinephrine auto injector. In case you are ever again uh, exposed to that allergen, you can, you can give your that epinephrine shot to protect you from developing anaphylaxis. Now, if you have a life-threatening allergic reaction, anaphylaxis, you are going to be given um, a, a, an EpiPen, and that's the brand name. They go by a few other names. Basically, a, a shot of epinephrine um, that you would administer if you're exposed to, you know, something that you are allergic to. Food allergies in young children, a lot of them grow out of them with time. But I want to, along with the treatment, though, I really want to emphasize how important it is to see a healthcare provider, you know, especially with young children, I think a lot of parents get very stressed out and they think, 
oh, but this might be a food allergy, and they try and start making all of these adjustments in their diet, and I caution against that. Don't try any you know, extreme elimination diets, especially in a young child. Elimination diets in a young child can have serious consequences to their growth and development, so I don't recommend doing that. Definitely see your child's pediatrician. You know, If necessary, a short trial of an elimination of a suspected food allergen may be recommended, um, but I wouldn't just go cutting stuff out without you know, talking to them, being evaluated properly, because like I, I said, there it's it's very sad. There are a lot of case reports out there of you know children who developed profound nutritional deficiencies because they were put on these um, uh, you know elimination diets, which were not only unnecessary but you know obviously harmful to them. You know, it's something that happens a lot in in atopic dermatitis, eczema. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, a lot of you know people who have atopic dermatitis, eczema they are at an increased risk for food allergies, but the food allergies are not necessarily what's causing the eczema, the, eczema, the skin problem. Yes, the, you know, if they have a true food allergy, and they can develop these symptoms of hives and things, but it's not, you know, they're kind of in their own separate towers living in one neighborhood, if you will. So they hear, you know, they hear, oh, eczema, higher risk of food allergies, and they say, oh, well, maybe there's a food that's making their eczema worse and they try and eliminate things, and that can lead you down a, a dangerous path in, in many cases. Um, likewise, you know, hives, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, hives is a big category of different, there are a lot of different types of hives, many different causes of hives. Food allergy is not really a very common one, um, so you definitely would want to see a healthcare provider um, for evaluation of your hives, otherwise known as urticaria. Uh, urticaria can be triggered by like having a cold or a flu. It can reflect an underlying thyroid problem. Some foods actually can just make hives worse, but they're not the cause of the hives. For example, alcohol uh, can make hives worse or consuming hot liquids. But those foods are not actually the root cause of the hives in a lot of cases. Um, so just keep that in mind. That's why knowing what you're dealing with is so important. And there are a lot of potential causes for hives, not just food allergies. Anyway, y'all, I really hope this video was helpful to you guys. Y'all seem to really enjoy my videos on you know skin signs of X, Y, and Z. On the end slate, I'm going to put my recent video on these skin signs that your cortisol is too high. So definitely check that one out next if you missed it. But if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.